Hi there. I am Lindsay Lichtenstein, the founding director of Camp Yarnsey. This is Start Spinning, our Top Worlds Spindles episode. This video is brought to you by Camp Yarnsey. Knit along with us on Monday nights, spin around on Wednesdays, Thursdays is our open craft night. You can find the links to all of our virtual meetings and events at Yarnsey. If we make you happy today, honk our horn by sharing us with your fellow Yarnsey friends, giving us a like, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We love seeing our old familiar Yarnsey faces as well as meeting new Yarnsey lovers out there. Today, we're talking about the top whorl spindle. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is a top whorl spindle? I'm not sure what that is, what, what it's about. Spin in a clockwise fashion. Now, let's do a quick rewind. Our most recent video was on spindles, which was Spindles 101. So let's get some brief facts about the drop spindles, and in particular, the top whorl spindles. So in that Spindles 101 video, we covered, again, different types of spindles. Now here's a picture of, in particular, the top whorl spindles. Now these spindles were purchased from Bosworth Spindles. You can find the link to this vendor and any other vendors we mentioned in this video in the details or comments section of this video. So look there for those links to check them out. If you're thinking, oh yeah, I've seen those before. Don't forget, they spin being suspended in the air. So they hang from the fiber. They spin from that. Who is a top whorl spindle good for? Well, it's great for beginners as well as intermediate and advanced spinners. And what is its glory moment? What makes a top whorl spindle so splint for fine yarns and shorter staple lengths because of its quick speed when it's spinning? And that's compared to other spindle types. Now here's your anatomy lesson 101. Now top whorls have a whorl. I know, big shocker there. So here's the whorl from the side. Here's the whorl from the top of the spindle. Now these spindles also contain a hook. Now the hooks may look a little different, but the hook will be on the top. And they also have a shaft. So they give you the shaft. Some of these spindles, depending on the maker, have a notch built in to the side of the top whorl. Now that will depend again on where you purchase your spindle from, but you can see an example, a notch right there. So that is your top whorl anatomy 101. So what do you need to join us for today's video? Of course, you will need a top whorl spindle and you'll need some fiber. Now, if you're not sure about the weight of the spindle, or which type would be best for you, check out our video, which is Spindle Spinning 101. If you're ready to make that purchase, but you also are not sure what fiber should I try for my first spin? There's so many different words out there. What's a bat? What's a roll egg? What's a roving? What is this stuff? And what do I need to buy? Just tell me what I need to shop for so that way I could spin on my spindle. Check out our video, which is shopping and selecting fiber. Moving right along. Step number one, pre-drafting. If you're thinking this, this, or this, mm, not quite. Pre-drafting helps you to find a couple things. The first thing is to find the staple length. This tells you how far apart your hands need to be when spinning. So for example, pull out, just tug out a little bit of fiber and you can see from my picture here that I have pulled out a little bit of fiber. And then I've also looked at how long it is. So my hands will need to be closer together than the end of where this falls off. Because what will happen is if I hold my hands, for instance, here and over here, this fiber is going to be more inclined to break because my hands are set apart longer than my fiber length is. 
Now here's pre-drafting in a nutshell. You're going to tear your fiber if you have a bat, if you have a have roving, comb top, etc. Then take those strips and you're going to slowly and gently draft the fiber. What that means is just give it a gentle tug where one hand is holding the one side. The other hand gives it. You want is you want to feel it give a little bit, not break, just give a little. And if you have no clue what I am talking about, about pre-drafting your fiber, check out our video, which is in the Start Spinning series, pre-drafting your fiber types that you can purchase and then how to draft those particular fibers. Step two, the twisted plan. <laughs> so let's get to thinking. What do you want your yarn to look like? Hmm, deep thoughts. What I mean by that is, do you want it a single or do you want it plied? Now, where you need to start thinking about this after today's video is you're going to spin one direction to get a single and you're going to spin in a different direction to get a plied yarn. Now, what a single yarn is, is think of sewing thread. It is one thread. There are a variety of manufacturers, um, commercial manufacturers, I should say, of yarn that makes singles. One example would be Malabrigo Worsted as an example. There's also a variety of commercially made yarn out there that's also plied. This really just depends on your project and how you want your yarn to look. Today, we're gonna spin a single. However, I'm just putting that out there so you are aware of this information. Now, if you want to know more information or what what's a single and what's plied, check out our video in the Start Spinning series, which is yarn structure. Now, I'm gonna come back to the yarn twist. Like I was just saying a moment ago, that whole single and plied kind of thing there. So let's take this down to a very simplistic definition. When you spin, you twist fiber into yarn. So twisting the fiber gives the yarn its strength. Does this matter what direction I'm spinning in? Well, this will affect your ability to put those threads together to make a plied yarn. So you have to have those yarns going the same direction when you put them together to join together. So they grab each other, like hold hands. Let's hold hands, let's hug it out. They have to be facing each other the same direction. Now, another key thing to this is how you knit or how you crochet. So if you yarn over and crochet over your hook or under your hook, that's kind of the equivalent of the knitter's version of the picker and continental style versus the thrower and the English style. How you knit and how you crochet matters to the yarn twist because haven't you ever had that yarn that you used before that just split? And you're like, what is this? That's why it split. You were working in the opposite direction that the yarn was twisted in. So let's break this down in a nutshell. You have S and Z twist. When I spin singles, I use the Z twist. So I spin counterclockwise. When I am spinning plied, I spin it in an S format, okay? Now, when I want to make just a single by itself, I will clockwise it. That's really confusing, I know. Today, all you need to know is this. All you need to know is this. Today, spin in the clockwise direction. Make sure you spin in a clockwise direction. Clockwise it, clockwise it, clockwise it today. Now, I am going to put out another video, which is coming soon, called Yarn Twist Matters. Why does yarn split? And I'm going to talk about how you knit in your crochet style affects the twist in your yarn. And this is a really cool topic because after this, you will then start to shop for yarn that the direction of the twist matters for the direction that you knit or crochet in. Or like I do, I spin my yarn in the direction that I am going to knit it in. So based on my style that I feel like knitting in that day. So all you need to know today again is you're going clockwise. Step three, making the yarn. Before we get there, how do you make the yarn? Great question, huh? Now, let's talk about this in a very simplistic way before we put yarn and spindle together and they make a baby, which is called yarn. So 
This is called the drafting triangle. Now, the drafting triangle is very complex. Not really. Here's what happens. You have the spindle, which rotates here. Now, anytime you give something motion, it creates energy. That energy is then put into the fiber, which is here. Now, what happens? Motion becomes twist. So as that spindle rotates, it creates twist. The twist travels up the fiber right here where your hand is pinching it. Think of this spot right here as a gate. So no twist is able to go past your pinching hand right here. So what happens is the twist builds in the fiber and creates, you got it, baby yarn. Ah. Now, the drafting triangle. To make this very easy to understand, here is a triangle. Here is where your hand is pinching. Now, this is the fiber supply. So this is the fiber that has not become a yarn baby yet. It's coming into that section. It's waiting to come through that gate for the gate to close and for the twist to build up through it again. The wider this triangle is, so the more fiber you have coming right here, through here, the more fiber that comes actually through your hand that you let the twist into, the wider the triangle, think of more fiber, the thicker the yarn. So fewer the fibers, the smaller the triangle, the thinner the yarn. Think a few fiber, FFF for fingering is how an easy way to remember that. So that's a simplistic way of how yarn is born. Here's what we're gonna do. This is how you do this. This is an overview because we're about to get started. Now, your hands, both of them are gonna be working today. Now, for this demonstration, I would recommend you sit down. Find a nice comfy seat to sit down in where your feet touch the floor, but you're comfortable. Relax. So pick your hands. Now, hand one or hand A, I recommend for the first time you try this, let hand one or hand A be your dominant hand, the hand you write with. If you're ambidextrous, hey, look for that pencil or pen or that cup. Which hand did you reach for? Pick it up. And which hand is that? That's your dominant hand at the moment. So this is the hand that you're mainly used for picking up things and motor movements towards you. Close motor movements, I should say, gross mo motor movements. So try your dominant hand or what you think is your dominant hand. Um, if you're in doubt as to which hand is really dominant, what you can do um, is have somebody throw something at you that is light. Uh, we don't recommend getting injured. See which hand moves to cover your body first. <laughs> that more likely is your dominant hand. So your dominant hand has two jobs. It's going to pinch and it's going to draft. Now, when you pinch, it does not have to be a death grip pinch. It's just a pinch to keep the twist from moving. Remember, right here, spindle is in motion. Motion creates energy. Energy is dispersed through twist. So think of your yarn baby here. You're gonna pinch right here. Keep your yarn baby right here. You control how much fiber goes through and becomes yarn. When you move your hand from here and you release and you come down here to pinch and you draft right here. So you're thinning this fiber supply out to let this the twist and move into it to become yarn. That is your dominant hand or hand one's job. Hand two or your non-dominant hand. For me, that is my left hand. It has a couple of jobs. The first thing is it creates the twist and it's the relieved hand for my right hand. So what my hand will do, my non-dominant hand or left hand will create the twist by flicking the shaft. Then when it's time for my dominant hand right here, see how it moves down to draft? When my right hand moves down to draft, I will take my left hand and pinch right here just to help it out at the moment to control again the twist. Then when my yarn, my new yarn becomes very long, this fiber, again, as you keep drafting and drafting and drafting will grow. When it becomes long enough, I will wrap it around the shaft using my non-dominant hand or left hand. So how does this look? Think of it this way. There's always one hand that's going to be pinching somewhere. So here, we're going to start after we join our yarn, we'll get there. 
This is an overview. Relax. Whew. Hand A, dominant hand, right hand. Pinch the fiber. B, flicks the spindle. When it flicks the spindle, remember what happens. Twist will travel upwards. Don't forget, you're flicking in a clockwise direction. So the twist will travel up to meet where your hand is pinching. Now it's important to keep that hand pinching because that keeps twist from entering what? You got it, the fiber supply. Now, this is why I say it's helpful to be sitting. You're going to park your spindle either between your thighs. Hey, think of this as exercise. It's a free thigh master. Well, I guess after you pay for the spindle, that might be cheaper than a thigh master these days. Who knows? Hmm. But you can either park it between your thighs or in your armpit, wherever you can stick the spindle to keep it from spinning or back spinning. So to keep it from moving. So clamp it in between your thighs or your armpit. Hand B will come up right where hand A is. Pinch right where hand A is. So hand B relieves hand where hand A was pinching. So just take the spot of hand A. Then that gives hand A the space to pull back on the fiber to draft, all right? Remember, you don't want to go that far. You just wanna go a little bit. So go the length of your staple length, if you can remember how long that was. Now, while hand A is going to pinch then, once it reaches your drafting spot, you're gonna pinch. Hand B, you're going to let go. What you'll see is this twist is going to travel upwards. Now, Take the spindle out from between your legs. Hand B is going to spin again, and that's gonna let more twist build up through your fiber here. And that is how we spin. Now, what happens when the yarn gets really long? How do we put it onto the spindle? You're going to rotate the spindle 20 to 30 degrees. What I mean by that is it's not, doesn't have to be an exact science. Just rotate it a little bit so it's not straight up and down. It's not vertical. Just give it a little bit of a slight, slight shift either to the left or to the right. And then you're gonna take B, which is your non-dominant hand, wrap the yarn around the shaft clockwise, okay? And then we rinse and repeat to create more yarn. So, are you ready to spin me, baby? Let's attach our pre-drafted fiber to our spindle. Let's start with, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna do this. I'm going to get the fiber, make a small hole in the fiber. Then I'm gonna hook the fiber, my hook. I'm going to use one hand to hold the spindle. The other hand, I'm gonna use to pinch the fiber. Then I'm going to use what I could call as hand B or my relief hand, then take that pinch from my hand A. I'm gonna move my hand A or draft up the fiber a little bit, pinch it again. I'm going to let go of the spindle, drop, and then I'm going to spin it clockwise. So let's see how that looks. A moment, I'm gonna put my spindle down here. I'm gonna pick up my pre-drafted fiber. I'm going to go to the end of my fiber. Now I'm gonna go not at the very end, towards the end here. I'm going to make a little hole here. Sometimes it's helpful to stick your pinky through it. I like to stick my pinky through the hole. And then I'm going to pick up my spindle. And here is my hole. I'm going to Hook my spindle into the fiber, do you see? And then I'm gonna give it just a little clockwise. And again, my relief hand holds for a moment. My right hand wraps up a little bit here. Then my hand A is pinching the top. What this does is I'm about to twist it. I'm going to keep the twist out of my fiber supply. It's gonna stop when it gets to my pinched hand. Now, I do not have a death grip, it's just a light grip to keep the twist from moving. And now my relief hand, or other hand, starts twisting clockwise. And you can see the twist has traveled up to my hand. 
Now, my hand is pinching lightly, so you can see it has not traveled back into my, that's my fiber strip. Now, this is how spinning works. You're going to stop the spindle, either use your relief hand, holding it here, you can tuck it into your armpit, you can tuck it into your lap, just somewhere you can hold the actual spindle to help you. With your hand A, draft back a little bit, let go of the spindle, flick it leaf hand clockwise. Again, I'm pinching here, so the spin is staying here. It's not traveling back into my fiber. And I'll stop again, and I'll pinch it here to hold my spindle. Again, you can put your, if it's easier for you, park it in your armpit, etc. I will grab the spot where my hand A was pinching. So hand A, draft out a little bit more fiber here and pinch again here. Hand A is gonna pinch. As soon as I pinch this and let go, you can see that twist starts to travel upwards here. Now my relief hand, again, will let go of the spindle and I wanna make sure I spin it the same direction, which is clockwise. Give it a few flicks. We'll hold it, stop it, either stick in your lap, armpit, etc. Or if you can hold with, I can hold hands. And I will hold my spindle here. I'll put the hook into my finger. How I do it. Pinch the spot where hand A was holding it. So hand A can come back and draft that a little more. Hand A will pinch again. I release. And you see, again, travels up. So I'm going to give this another couple spins clockwise. And you can see I have a very long cord now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this cord around the shaft. If yours falls apart like mine does, just hook it back on. So, no prying spindles. Only how to do this. Some spindles have a little groove. My particular one that I'm using today, which is Osborne Spindles, is um, Buddhist Temple Tea. Um, it's a lightweight spin. Love it. It has a little groove. What you can do is you can put fiber, or this is, I should say, your yarn, in that little groove, and then I am going to spin it at a 20 degree angle clockwise. And you can see some of my fiber then wraps on the shaft. Then to start spinning again, I can simply move this part over. That fiber, yarn back in here. I'm just going to wrap it under my hook. I'm going to hold my spindle again. And hand A, I'm just going to maybe come up and hold that part. Add a little fiber. Again, you can park your spindle in your armpit, your lap, etc. I I do a two handed kind of hold, hold the spindle and I'm pinching the spot where hand A was. Let hand A come back a little bit to draft. Hand B, which is this guy, let's go with that pinch in the, this travels up and then I will spin again clockwise. I spin a few times, let the twist build up there. Now, how do you know if you have enough twist? I'm just holding my spindle in between two fingers and I kind of pinch at spots and let go. You see this kind of bungee action? You want it to curl up on itself a little bit. Now you don't want to make a, it comes immediately like this, that's a little too much, but you want to see a little bit here. Don't worry about your first time about too much, just try it. All right, and then again, I'll park my spindle either in my lap, armpit, or I can hold it between two fingers, Come up here and grab where hand A was. Hand A comes back to draft a little bit. Now with drafting, what that means is just either smoothing the fibers, or if I need to make it a little bit smaller, you can see this is the area that's actually called your drafting triangle. If I fluff it, it makes almost a triangle. There's the point, here's the base of the triangle. Now the more fibers you have going through here, the wider your triangle will be. To wrap back just a little bit. Again, I'm going to try and keep my hands as close as my. And I 
clockwise, flip my spindle clockwise with my end beat. And then again, once I get enough on here, I want to wrap again. I will come down. I will unhook it. If you hold it, not straight up at a slight angle, it makes it easier when you wrap your base. And then I come back up underneath it, and I'm ready to spin again. So I'll hold my spindle one hand or park it in my armpit or lap, pinch where hand A was, let hand A draft out a little bit, let go, and spin clockwise. Give it a few flicks. And that is how you spin on a top whirl. All right. Now, just in case you've had what I like to call the fiber snapperoo, or you are ready to join your yarn. So you've reached the end of that fiber strip and you need to join more yarn. So how does this work? You're essentially going to take the end of the first fiber that you've just been spinning with and you're going to put the new fiber underneath it and you're going to add twist. So this looks just like this. You're gonna have a moment. Either you run out of fiber, or what happens if it breaks? All right. Oh no! You're gonna do get another piece of fiber. Wrap right. it out a little bit. Just wrap it now, just a little bit. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the in my end, the new. Here's my other. I'm just gonna park this right here so you can see it. Now here is that end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this end, lay it on top of this end. And I'm going to kind of grab it towards the center of where those two come together. I'm going to put it up here, clockwise, and just occasionally if I need to. Make that join a little smooth, but I just run my hand over. And voila! Yarn is joined. So let me. A little bit. So I'm not ripping it at the same spot. So I'm cruising along, cruising along, cruising along. Now, more than likely, what happens when it breaks? is you are on that staple length. And it comes apart that way. So once more, I'm just gonna park my spindle here. I can use my two hands. This is the one coming from the spindle. This is my new fiber, okay? I'm gonna put it on top of. I'm going to hold it in the center of the two. Bring my spindle down. And I'm going to spin. Remember, I'm going the same direction I was before. And then if you need to, your fingers, move that joint a little bit because it's spinning. And so it has been joined. And that is how you join the yarn. If you, again, are ending with one fiber piece and then coming into the next fiber piece, or you have what I deem a fiber snafu. Now, one more time, if you'd like to see how you spin on a spindle, let's watch it one more time in a different view. So once you've torn your little strip of fiber off from your braid, I'm gonna pick up my spindle. Now, do you see this shepherd's like hook here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of fiber wrapped around this. I'm gonna spin it clockwise and get enough built up here. So that way, 
Once I need to start wrapping it, I will go around my little dowel core and get my spinning started. So how do I hook my fiber? Pick up your fiber and I'll kind of go towards the end here. Oh, let's put the design. All right, now I'll bring my fiber up so I can see it. Not the very end, eh, maybe a little bit. I'm gonna make a tiny hole. I'll just stick my pinky right through the middle of the fiber. All right, and I have made myself a little hole in my fiber. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my hook here and I'm going to hook that into the fiber. Like so, see? All right, now I'm gonna take my right hand. I'm just gonna pinch to hold that for a moment. So I can draft this little section out just a little bit. It's a little thick right there. And then I'm going to take the end, bring it back towards the rest of the fiber is lying there. All right. So I've just hooked that fiber through there. I'm going to pinch my right hand and I'm going to start to spin in a clockwise direction. As I'm spinning, you'll see the twist is coming up and through the fiber. See that? That twist is what creates the yarn. So I'm going to hold it for just a moment. Grip with my left hand so the twist doesn't come up into the fiber. I'm just gonna draft this back just a little bit. A little chunky, just right there. Okay. Hold it with my right hand again, pinch. Now when I pinch and let go, you see the twist moves up into my right hand and I will twist again more of that built up. Now my right hand, what it's doing is it's keeping the twist from moving into the fiber. So each time I stop my spindle, take my left hand to kind of hold where my right hand was. Again, just keeping that twist from coming into the right side, but it's not a death grip, it's just a light grip, just enough to keep the twist going through there. Take my right hand and I'll grip down. Once I do that, that goes my left hand. And again, you see the twist come up and then I'll spin my spindle and then clockwise direction. Again, letting that twist just build up and in there. I'll hold my spindle one more time. And now I'll go stopping point and I'll spin in a clockwise direction until it reaches my hand. All right, at this point, I have quite a long little bit here. So what I'll do is I will, some spindles now have a little Stop, Benny. Have a little notch. This particular spindle has a little notch. So what I can do is I can slide down there, hold it with my thumb for a moment, and then spin the spindle eyes direction again. And you'll see what happens. Start wrapping that yarn around the center. Okay. Let's have a little bit wrapped. I'm just gonna move this out of that groove, slide to the side. If you want to, you can take this off. I like to leave mine on just so I know where it is. Slide that back into that grooved spot. If it's helpful for you, put in the groove spot, then put your thumb on it. And then I'm just going to bring the fiber underneath the hook again. So all I did was just bring it underneath the hook and then I'll come back to where my hands were. Just give it a couple little twists clockwise. And again, continue doing what I was doing before. Move my hands to part. All right, now 
we're going to talk about unwinding. How do I get it off now? Great question. You can either check out our video called Unwinding Your Spindle, or you can use a nitty naughty and check out our website, which is yarnsy.com forward slash nitty naughty. And we'll show you how to get the yarn off of your spindle. Now, coming up, we're going to have Spindles 103, a supported spindle spinning. So you can spin along with us on a supported spindles if you've been curious about that. If we've made you happy today, don't forget to share us with your Yarnsy friends and give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We wish you a very happy day. And as I always like to say, once a Yarnsy, always a Yarnsy. Have a great day.